so welcome to everybody in the chat i hope you guys are feeling good hit that uh like button hit that thumbs up button on your bleacher report app share this video let the people know that we are in here chopping it up and talking knicks shout out to uh poncho brigante he says cp how does it feel to be the current face of knicks fans um look man i, I think the support from the fan base is great i don't necessarily i don't want to see myself as the face because as i call myself on knicks fan tv i'm the conductor man i like to talk knicks and give my opinions but a lot of times i want to hear what you guys have to say this is why we host these q and a's i want to hear what your thoughts your opinions get your questions and answer it but i appreciate it i i appreciate the uh the love the respect and the adoration from the knicks fans to bestow that honor upon me i hope i'm doing a good job but let's talk about these knicks the current day knicks because as of right now they sit at 42 and 31 on the campaign 73 games in nine games left the new york knicks sitting currently in the fifth spot in the east two games above the brooklyn nets who sit in six and three games above the miami heat who sit in seventh with two big games coming up against the miami heat one on wednesday and then they'll have another final one next week to wrap up the series against the heat so they're not out of the woods wood, woods just yet especially with the miami heat because the knicks right now have won the first two games of the series Miami can come back and tie it. Then once you get into tiebreakers, it comes down to conference record. So at the same way with the Nets. Knicks and the Nets currently sitting um, with, in their season series. They've tied that up. So if they were to finish that season tied, end of the regular season tied, then it comes down to conference tiebreakers. So the Knicks have got to take care of business, and it starts tomorrow in Miami. And then heading into Orlando, Holiday 715 says, how big are these back-to-back games coming up? I feel like it's a must-win. Absolutely. Must-win. Miami game is a must-win. And even the Orlando game is a must-win. The Knicks want to they, they end this month having a good idea of where they stand in the standings. You don't want to let this thing go all the way to game 82 to decide your playoff fate. You want to hopefully, they, they want to hope to get to a point where their seating is established. They can kind of taper off some of the minutes of some of their major players. Jalen Brunson needs to watch with the foot injury. Julius Randle could use a rest mentally, physically. And so you, you want to see if you can get these guys a little bit of rest. If they make the playoffs and not have to settle for the play-in, you'll have almost a week between the end of the regular season on April 9th to the start of the first round on April 15th. Maybe they fit, maybe they, maybe they uh they play on the 16th, so then you have a full week. So you want to be able to do that. But in order to do that, guys, you got to tighten up and win the games you're supposed to win, which means Miami and Orlando, because on Monday night, this Nick team did not answer the call against an undermanned Minnesota Timberwolves team. Can you say trap game without Anthony Edwards, without Carl Anthony Towns? Full squad Nick team. At the Minnesota Timberwolves looking like the world champion warriors out there. You can't have that happen if you have playoff aspirations. Now, you can look at this game and say, look, this was an out-of-body experience by this Timberwolves team. I absolutely believe that. I mean, for this Timberwolves team to shoot 58% from three, Torian Prince out there looking like Scottie Pippen, eight for eight for downtown. I mean, you had a, a career night for guys. Noel off the bench. Kyle Anderson had himself a night. Mike Conley turned the clock back like he was in Memphis. You got to win those games. You have to win those games. And so you chalk it up. It was a letdown game. You got to bounce back stronger and hungry against Miami because they will be waiting. And they will be ready to go and try to take this game for the Knicks. They know how important it is. That's a veteran team. Got to come with your A game. But it's got to start on the defensive end for the Knicks because the defense was absolutely atrocious. And give credit to Jalen Brunson. We have to salute him for taking accountability for his effort last night uh, on Monday night in the loss against the Timberwolves. He said it. I got to play better defense. I got to be better for my team. And that is a fact because they try to park him on Torian Prince, the less mobile of that lineup, and he got he still got torched. They put Grimes on, on Mike Conley. Mike Conley still had his way. So the perimeter defense, the point of attack defense has to tighten up because once that break down 
and you're getting into the middle of the paint. And now this Knicks defense has to scramble. Now they have to rotate and be sharp in their rotations, running guys off the three-point line. That's where things get a little bit chaotic. They gave up 68 points in the paint on Monday night's loss to the Timberwolves without two of their best stars. Shout out to Lash. Shout out to Tratacast in the building. So you got to tighten up defensively. And for Tom Thibodeau, because once we get into playoff time, coaching, you're coaching, it's going to matter. You're going to be evaluated on that. And you may have to go, does Tom Thibodeau have to go defense, offense, where you're subbing out Brunson and you're going with a quickly Hart, Grimes, defensive guards on the perimeter? You might have to do that, but it's not a big deal. We're trying to win games here. So if you got to go with a, with an all-defense lineup on the perimeter, you got to do that. So how you manage your timeouts, how you manage those in-game situations is going to be critical. The, uh, Tom Thib- Thibodeau also had an opportunity to use use a challenge last night at a key stretch in the game with Jaden McDaniels was uh, pushing off on Jalen Brunson. He didn't use it. The coaching, you got to be ready. You got to be sharp. You got to be sharp. So the defense has got to tighten up. Got to tighten that up, man. And it starts at the point of attack. Now, speaking of Grimes, shout out to KV in the chat. Says shout out to CP. Knicks got to get Grimes more shots. Best shooting defender on the team. Doesn't even play in the fourth quarter at all since the hard trade. And we've been telling me that. And we've been talking about that. Shout out to KV, uh, a Knicks fan TV member. When you have a full strength, when you have a full deck and you're starting five, Brunson, RJ, Randall, the big three, Grimes is going to be almost seen as an afterthought because this is such an heavy, isolation-heavy offense. It's in Brunson's hands, he's going to go. It's in Randall's hands, he's going to go. It's in RJ's hands, you know he's going to go. They've got to, they've got to spray that ball. They've got to spray that ball. In RJ's case, you got to stop forcing we saw in the past couple of games, uh, the Denver game, he was great. I thought he was great. Don't force the issue. This is what Tibbs said. Don't force the issue. Minnesota game, especially in the seventh, in the second half, he looked like he was forcing the issue a little bit more. So they've got to find a way to let that thing spray because Quentin Grimes is still one of your more efficient three-point shooters. We are looking for efficiency in the playoffs. Because as brilliant as Julius was in that game on Monday night, 57 points, one of the best quarters scoring-wise, I've one of the best I've ever seen next to Carmelo against the Bobcats. Those tough shots may not fall in the playoffs. So you want to go to some of your more higher efficiency shooters. And I know Grimes hasn't always been on target, but we still got to get him some looks, get him into the flow of things. And, and, and Kiwi's right. He hasn't even been playing in the fourth quarter because Hart and Quickly are going to be dominating those close minutes. We know this. Especially if they're going to be able to shoot better. Shout out to Jay Cardigan. Says, yes, sir, CP. Nick's, RJ Nick's Barrett says, love your channel. I bought two KFTV hats, bro. Salute, man. Salute to KFTV Hive, man. Try to catch us at CP Eagles Conductor President. Appreciate you, man. Definitely appreciate it. Holiday 715 says, notice RJ been on the bench and not finishing games in the fourth. That's starting to be a trend. Well, in the game against the Nuggets, he finished. And I think I'm holding Tibbs at his word. This is going to be merit-based. How he's performing, how he's shooting, how he's defending is going to determine whether or not he finishes these games. One person who's going to finish is Josh Hart. Josh Hart is in there. When he gets his minutes... Midway through the third, or near the end of the third, whatever it is, he's he's in for the game. He's in. Barring injury, foul trouble, he's in there. So between RJ, Grimes, quickly, it's all going to be dependent on who's cooking and where Tibbs is going to go. D-Block says, RJ's tunnel vision drives me crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Because to me... The with the skill set that RJ has, and people say, Well, what is he good at? He's, he's great at attacking the basket, he's great at driving to the rim. But from there, it's not just about looking to score, looking to, to, to draw contact, those are good things. But if, if two guys are on you, if, if a guy's helping, a guy's on your back, you got to look for the open man or look to make that hockey assist. 
because there's going to be a guy open. So that's that needs to be added to RJ's game to make his team better and to be to impact winning more in his minutes. Eugene Torian Prince looked like Steph Curry last night. He sure did, man. It's one of those nights. Every team in the NBA has those nights where it's just it, it, it's just a complete aberration. It's an out of out of body experience. I said on Knicks Fan TV last night, you know, if the Timberwolves have another game like this without Edwards and, and Towns, they'd be lucky. Torian Prince goes eight for eight. This is a guy who hits one three per game. So everything that the Timberwolves did last night went against the odds. It happens. It absolutely happens. Once again, salute to Bleacher Report Nation, man. CP the franchise here for another Knicks fan q and I'm talking about it, man. Nine games left. Big games this week in Orlando, in Florida, in Miami, in Orlando on a back-to-back. They got to get it done, man. They got to get it done. You don't want to be, you don't want to give this Heat team any life. And you don't want to get this Nets team any life either. Because you don't want to see these guys in the top three right now. That's not where the Knicks need to be. Four or five is ideal. Looks like four. Looks like the Cavs are going to run away with four. Mal Benny says, can the Knicks win a championship with Randall as number one option? No. No, I don't think so. It's not a knock on Julius. It's not a knock on Julius. Julius is having an outstanding year. 57 points last night. He's in the top five in in performances at Madison Square Garden now. He's in the top five. Number one, Carmelo Anthony. Well, let me, let me let's go back to it. Make sure. Yeah, Carmelo Anthony with 62. James Harden with the Rockets at 61 in 2019. Rest in peace to the late great Black Mamba Kobe Bryant, who also did it 61 in 2009. Bernard King, one of the greatest Knicks to ever live with a 60 piece in 1984. In a loss. And then Randall 57. Um, the thing is, is that and we saw we kind of saw it last night. Where do we go in crunch time? If if Julius is cooking, because he's all he's statistically and through the eye test, not our most clutch player. That's Jalen Brunson. And last night. I wanted to see Julius close because he deserved that opportunity because he was so brilliant in the third quarter. But he's also not a good clutch player. What will he do in the playoffs? He's got to shake a lot of demons. He has to shake a lot of demons. Will He, he hits a lot of tough shots, a lot of tough shots. Will those fall in the playoffs? Will he be physically and mentally able to handle the pressure of the playoffs it's a different game it's not as fast the game slows down it becomes a half court game can he execute last night again not his fault but in he had some crunch time situations he had some costly turnovers his defense wasn't all that good and as the guy he's got to be able to do that so no i don't think they can win with julius as their number one guy but they're certainly being competitive right now. You like the way they're looking. 42 and 31, already surpassing the expectations of the season. The Knicks are having a great season. I don't care if anybody, you know, there's some prognosticators out there saying that, uh, well, if they don't win the first round, it's a failure of a season. I don't see that at all. I think the season is already a success. They're going into the playoffs, they're coming off of a down year. They're going into the playoffs with a talent upgrade. I just want them to be competitive. Of course, I want them to win. Come out the first round. Come out the second round. Win a championship. I want to see all of that. But be competitive at the very least. Don't go out there and get watched like you did against the Hawks. That was embarrassing. I don't want to see Trey Young celebrating at our demise. You don't want to see that. We don't want to see that. Ratislav says, uh, most likely Knicks will finish fifth. Can they beat the Cavs? I think they can. I think they can. They've won the series in series two and one. And I don't, you know, you don't really want to take too much stock into that season series. But I think they can. I think they, with the upgrade in talent, the way Brunson has played, Randall, you have quickly who's been good. Josh Hart, the, the, the element that he brings off the bench, what Hartenstein's been able to do. 
I think they can. But number one, I got to see how they play. You know, this is a Cavs team that is ranked number one in the NBA right now. They have the Twin Towers in the middle. Points in the paint will be hard to come by. And then they scramble very well on the perimeter. So that's going to be a tough matchup. You know, don't think just because it's a more preferred matchup that it'll be easy. Because that's not it. And by the way, you got two tough scores on the perimeter. When, when I opened the show talking about defense with the Knicks, who's guarding Spider? Who's guarding Garland? Who's guarding Spider? Who's guarding Garland? It's going to be tough. You're going to put Brunson on a Coro? Then who's RJ guarding of the two? You're going to put you're going to put RJ on Donovan Mitchell? Right? Grimes is going to get one of those two guys. He's going to get Garland. He's going to get Spider. If you put Brunson on a Coro to try to limit his workload and not have to chase a guard around the perimeter, then that leaves R.J. Barrett on one of those guys. Tough. It's going to be a tough matchup. When Spider gets activated in the playoffs, he's tough as well. So it's going to be a very tough matchup, man. It's going to be a very tough matchup, but I still think that the Knicks can beat these guys. But it's going to take a big effort from their stars, from Brunson, from Randall. And they're going to have to be able to move the ball on this defense, man. You cannot just be a stagnant offense settling for isos. Brunson and Randall are going to have to use their ability to create, to play make. And they're going to have to get some good ball movement against an aggressive Cavs defense. Let's see who else we got in the chat, man. You done know, he says, we need more movement on the offense in crunch time when the opponent clamps down. All that one-on-one won't be sustainable. Well, <clears throat> the best figure out a way to, even in one-on-one situations, create advantages. How are we creating advantages? Is it in isolation as a scorer? Is it in isolation in, in playmaking? Is it off of the pick and roll? Is it dumping it down to a big man? You know, where are our advantages on this offense and right now through these 73 games it's through isolation through Julius and through Brunson and I don't see that changing very much right now but the thing is is that when they are creating these advantages are they going to capitalize can they knock down a timely shot or are they able to make that play to find an open guy like a Grimes like an RJ like a quick whoever's out there and will they be rewarded supporting cast is going to have to do their job as well Supporting cast is going to have to do their job as well. And there's been a lot of talk with with Julius's 57-point performance in a tough loss last night against the Timbers. A lot of talk, man. Is he better? Is he a better Nick than Carmelo Anthony? What do you guys think of the chat? Is Julius a better Nick than Carmelo Anthony? My guy Robert Randolph of Friday Night Knicks fame. Do it just to get there. He's been adamant. He's been on a rampage. He's going after everybody. Myself, Ian Begley, this guy. He's better than Carmelo. He's better Nick than Carmelo. I'm not even a fan of the argument. I don't see why you have to put one down to elevate the other. But I, I, I just think that as, as Knicks fans were so used to having nothing over these last 20 some odd years that Anything that seems like a win, we would have put it up into, into the rafters. We've turned into that meme now. You know, the meme where after every good thing, every every good game or accolade, they have that little meme in the rafters next to the retired jerseys. It's it's come to that now. So people want to have that debate. Is he a better Nick than Carmelo? Julius has been here for four years. Over the four years, he has... He's averaging 22 22 a game, 10 rebounds on 34% from three, 50% effective field goal percentage. Carmelo was with the Knicks for seven years, 24.7 points per game, seven rebounds, 36% from three, 40% effective field goal percentage. I still think Melo's better. If you ask me, Mellow's better. I mean, in 2012-13, when this Nick team 
Carmelo Anthony finished third in the MVP race. That's how good he was. He was dominant. He was dominant. I mean, think about the, 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 the 50 burger that he dropped in Miami against the Heat with no threes. That was a mid-range clinic. Now, Julius is a better rebounder. When he wants to play defense, when he's engaged on defense, he's capable. We know that. We, we certainly know that. But, um, and no, Melo Mel did shoot threes in that game. He did shoot threes in that 50-point game against Miami. But the point is, his arsenal was, to me, better. It is better than Julius's. And to me, Melo was a more clutch player. We talk, we talk about the fact that Julius is just not a clutch player. That goes to Melo. He's hit more big shots here in his career than Julius. And most importantly, he's won playoff games. Those are the demons right now that are chasing Julius Randle from truly being a great in this town. He's having a great season, but it's about the playoffs in this town. It always has been. The playoffs is where heroes are made. This is where superstars are made. You got to get it done there. And to Melo's credit, even with some bum Nick teams, they made the playoffs three years in a row. And in that 2012-2013 season, they got to the second round. They won a series. So to me, it comes, and I'll keep it short because I, I don't, I don't, I'm not into that debate. I think Julius is having a great season. Although uh, Melo had some great seasons with the Knicks, neither one of them won a championship for the Knicks. So why even give it that much air time? <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, neither one has been able to accomplish the ultimate goal. However, I think I think Melo I think Melo's still a better Nick. Then I'll just I'll just leave it at that. You guys in the chat, let me know your thoughts. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Shout out to Mr. Latimer, Drip Moore, Ezra Nelson. How you feeling? Salute, salute, salute. CP the franchise on Bleacher Report for another fan Q and A. Having a great time doing this, man. Having a great time doing this. Live in Lexus, absolutely not. CJ289 says, Mello would never let us lose that game last night. Yeah, because he'd be taking all the shots. He says, uh, let's see, G-Money Burns, I don't think so, only because the front office never put anything around him. If Prime Mello was on this team, what do you think our record would be? I agree with that. He never had help. Never had help. Stat was a flop. Mari Stoudemire with the Knicks was a flop. A lot of people want to give him credit. He, he, he claimed the Knicks. The Knicks are back. I like Stat. I did like that. He had a great run, right? 10 straight games, 30 plus. Made the all-star team and all of that. And after that, it, fit, it went crashing down. His tenure with the Knicks. Productivity just dropped off a cliff. See ya. So he had no help. The 2012-13 season, <clears throat> that team was perfectly built. They played defense. They had a ton of three-point shooters. You had one of the best scorers in the game. They had a big, big veteran presence in the locker room. They had great point guard play. Between Kidd to Felton to Prigioni, they had enough. That's why that team was good. They got the job done. You had Tyson Chandler. You had Tyson Chandler, defensive player of the year candidate. Even though Roy Hibbert, yeah, Roy Hibbert looking like, you know, Kareem. Well, we won't go there. So, you know, the talent level. You put Melo with a talent like a Brunson. It's different. It's a different thing, man. Melo's out there. He's, he's dragging Tony Douglas to the dance and Jared Jeffries. Bill Walker. Bill Walker's just trying to dunk on everybody. Melo on this team would be a problem. Not to take away from what Julius is doing, but I'm just speaking the fact. So, 
the hope is with these nine games left that Julius can get to the finish line healthy and hey money time is coming I say it on Knicks fan TV playoff time is money time and that will be the ultimate judge of how Julius Randle looks for this with this team we'll see pressure cooker situation tight defenses good teams and it's a series it's not just one game it is a series Nick's Tony says he's playing great, but comparing him to one of the best scorers of all time is crazy. Yeah, but this is what we like to do, man. We like that comparison game. We do. Shout out to uh, Jay Fetty Wops says we need McCall Bridges in the garden. Yeah, worst thing that happened to McCall Bridges was A, not being drafted by the Knicks to begin with, and B, being traded to the Nets because now I don't see a chance of him coming to the Knicks. Client T10 says, who do we need to add in the offseason? Another star. Who's it going to be? Keep an eye out on Jalen Brown, man. Keep an eye out on Jalen Brown. There's a lot of sound bites coming out of Boston. Recent interview that Jalen Brown did with the New York Times. It's hard to say whether Jalen Brown is, 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 uh, is really happy there in Boston. Whether Boston is the right fit for Jalen Brown as a team on the court or as a city off the court. He's got a lot of aspirations, a lot of community engagement, a lot of social justice causes. He says he's not really feeling the love in Beantown right now. Keep an eye out on that. Because how this Nick team finishes in the playoffs, Leon and these guys, they're going to get back to the drawing board. Now they've, now they've got some house money to play with. The Brunson acquisition was their best. Josh Hart trade was a slam dunk. Now they're back. Last year was a flop, 48. Rose, Kemba, flop, bringing those guys back, bringing back Burks, even though I'm a Burks guy, flopped. So they took a couple spaces back. Now they're back up. So how will they build on this after this is all said and done? I think they'll continue to go hunting, but hey, you never know. E94 says, if we land Jalen Brown, would that be the last piece needed to be a championship contender? I think they could. Add some more shooting. We need some more three-point shooting. Add another three-point shooter to your bench. Or if Grimes can be a little more consistent, if Grimes goes to the bench, I think that would make them pretty formidable. They'd be a tough out in the East. Would they be in the top half of the contenders? No, I don't think so, but they would be there. I think they would, they would easily be a top five team in the league. You bring Jalen Brown in there. Jay Morales says Boston will never trade him to the Knicks. Probably not. And then you would also have to see, like, what is what is Boston looking for? Because remember, in the previous years, when they did have Jalen Brown in trade practices, they've been for stars. They tried to get Kevin Durant. So with the Knicks, you got to figure, what do they really have to entice Boston? And, and because Boston is still looking to, to cash in and win some championships in the Tatum era. So they're not necessarily looking for Knicks role players and draft picks to start over. They want a ready-made guy if they're going to pair with a Jalen, part with a Jalen Brown. You, or else, or at least you would have to think so. Somebody said Draymond Green. Hell no. We don't need Draymond Green here. No chance. No chance. Draymond Green. You're crazy. But yeah, keep an eye out on that on that Jalen Brown situation in Boston, man. Very, very interesting. DM163 says, RJ OB Mitch and six first round picks for Embiid. Well, that might be what it takes to get him. And we'll see. All those rumors about Harden wanting to go back to Houston like it's a foregone conclusion. Where does that put the process? Will the process hit his old agent Leon Rose up and say, hey, get me out of here. I still want to compete for championships. Let's go. T Valentine 23. C CP stay busy. That's a fact. The grind don't stop, man. And, and definitely appreciate everybody for tapping in to this Bleacher Report special edition Knicks fan QA. As usual, man, you can catch me on youtube.com slash Knicks fan TV. 
You could also catch me on Knicks Fan TV and all social media platforms and at CP the Franchise, no R, for the fans, by the fans, on all social media platforms, man. So that will wrap it up for this week's edition. And we'll catch you guys next week, man. Be sure to hit that like button, hit the thumbs up button, and share this video. Bleacher Report, Bleacher Report community, have a great night. Have a great day. Rest in peace to the Captain Willis Reed, man. CP, I'm out of here. Peace.